in this series, we'll be making a horror game from the ground up and teaching you everything along the way. From researching, theorizing, and prototyping, to main menus, UI, and sound. Join me and follow along to become the master game developer you want to be. Hello everybody and welcome back to creating a horror game from scratch. I just want to shout out anybody that's still watching this series. I appreciate the support and I hope you guys are learning a lot. Today we are going to be creating the system that checks to see if there is a banshee and if we take a look at our evidence whether or not it is screaming. Of course this will also work with the demon but obviously when you think of screaming you think of that terrifying bone chilling banshee. Terrifying bone chilling banshee scream. So the way we're going to go about this is actually going to be a little experimental as this is not something that I've even done yet, but I believe I can make this happen. The first thing we're going to need though is the scream. So go ahead and open up a browser and head to free sound, or at least that's where I'm going to be going. And for the search sounds, I'm just going to be typing in banshee. We'll see if anything comes up. Banshee crying. Let's take a listen. Oh, that is terrifying. All right, so this is the one I'm going to be using. So we're gonna do the banshee crying. So maybe instead of a scream, it does the cry. And since the ghost is going to be coming towards our room, maybe we need something that's a little bit easier to detect a little bit quicker than hoping the randomness of the scream happens. So what we need to look for is a couple things. If you look, it says this work is licensed under the attribution of the 4.0 license. So since I don't know what 4.0 is, we're going to click on it. Uh, oh, let's get out of the ad. You are free to share and adapt. However, we can't use this in like anything licensed or anything like that. So keep that in mind. But for the sake of the tutorial, I am free to use it. To import it, I'm simply gonna hit control space. We're gonna go over to our content folder and I like to create a custom folder for anything that I've imported. And the reason I do this is so if I need to make a credit section to make sure everyone gets the credit they deserve for the files I use, they'll be in this imported folder. So in the imported, I will then create another subfolder called free sound and in within free sound, we'll create a new folder and we'll call this the Banshee crying now this is in its own folder and you'll see why in just a moment but to import it now that we're in this folder i'm simply going to get it from the subfolder that's just on my computer and drag it into the unreal engine it should look something like this and if we hit play it plays so now what we need to do is make it so this sound file is ready for us to use in order to do that I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go up here and click create cue so the difference between a raw sound file and a cue is the cue gives us all kinds of settings that we can play with in order to create the sound that we want in this case we don't really need too much to be done here um, on the left hand side, you can see we can apply custom um, attenuation settings, which for now I'm not going to, um, but the class is important. Get into the habit of doing this because when you go to create an options menu, you're going to want these to be set up in the correct class. So if someone adjusts the volume, the correct things get turned up or down. So for example, if we open this up, you'll see we have master music, normal sound effects, special attack and voice. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and place it under voice. So if you are turning the voice meter up or down, the banshee crying will go up or down. I hope that made sense. Let's go ahead and save and close the queue and we're good. That'll be good for now. Now what I want to do is head back over to our browser, but this time we are going to make our way over to Sketchfab. I've typed in walkie talkie and I've selected downloadable. If you scroll down a bit here, you should see this nice yellow one that looks a little bit sci-fi. I really enjoy this one because our game is going to be based around ghosts, so it makes it look like there's a little something extra going on with the walkie-talkie. 
However, anytime you download something off the internet, there's a few things we need to look out for. The first would be how many triangles the model is. This one's 4.2 thousand, which isn't too bad. It's a little high for something we're just gonna be holding, but it's completely manageable. The next thing we wanna look at is see if there's any specific instructions from the person that uploaded it. They said, uh, try to mention when you use it. Well, you know what? I am gonna mention you, Rhett Ouches. Thank you for the walkie talkie. And we'll click on your CC attribution, which is 4.0, which means that we can share it and adapt it. Just don't use it as is and sell it. And uh, obviously attribution, we're good to go. Go ahead and click on download 3D model. And we're going to download the OBJ. Once it's downloaded, simply right click on it and I'm going to extract files because I use WinRAR. However, you can simply unzip the folder. Open up the folder and you'll see we have a source folder and a textures folder. Go ahead and grab both of these and head into the Unreal Engine. Within the imported folder, I'm going to create another subfolder called Sketchfab. Open that up and create another folder called Walkie Talkie. Open that up and now we'll drag in the source and the textures. We'll get this prompt, just go ahead and click import all. You'll see we got all kinds of files from that. A lot of these are going to be the different textures for the different parts of the walkie talkie. We have the default mat, which comes from whatever 3D modeling program they used. And then we have the 3D model. We can go ahead and delete the default mat. Go ahead and press the force delete button and you'll note that the walkie model went from white to the Unreal Engine grid material and that's perfectly fine. Click on the walkie talkie subfolder and then click on textures. Let's go ahead and create a material for the main mat. As you can see there's display, internal, blah blah blah. We're going to just do main for now. Right click in the empty area and click on material. Let's call this walkie talkie main underscore mat and open it up. Once it's open, hit control space. We're going to grab the main mat base color and drag it on screen. The main mat base color goes into, you guessed it, base color. Control space again and we'll grab the metallic. The metallic goes into the, you guys are good at this, metallic. Now we'll skip normal and go to roughness. The only reason I'm doing that, by the way, is organizational purposes, because it's next on the list. Roughness goes into roughness. We'll go back to the normal. Normal goes into normal. And then one more. We have the ambient occlusion, or the AO, and that goes into ambient occlusion. With all of it plugged in, go ahead and press save. Now if we go back to the wonky talkie folder, go into the source and open up the model, You'll note that one, it's very small, so we'll have to adjust that, but two, it doesn't have the material on it. So, there were several parts, and as you can see, there's actually only one material slot, so I'm interested to see what this chooses to actually apply material to, because normally, when you go and look at the textures, you can see there's display, internal, main, and all the other stuff, but at the same time, there's only one material. So that's interesting. Let's see what this does. So go ahead and open it up and we're going to type in main and you can see walkie talkie main mat and click it. Um, it actually, <laughs> uh, it did not apply the way we wanted it to, but again, this is a tutorial and you shouldn't be selling this model anyway. So for now, this will work. Let's go ahead and press save. Now let's head over to the BP first person character. Normally, we're going to have to create a system in which the first person character knows which item we're holding. So therefore, when the player uses that item, the game knows what to do. So for example, the game will know we're holding the walkie talkie. For now, we are going to hard program it to only work with the walkie talkie since it is the only tool we currently have and we will add the ability to switch tools later on. To do this, we're gonna go ahead and add a static mesh to our first person character and name it radio underscore SM. 
I'm then going to make the radio SM a child of the first person mesh. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because we're actually going to go over here to the right hand side and make sure radio is selected. And we're going to change the parent socket. If you hit this little select a different parent socket button and scroll down until you see hand underscore R. Now you'll note where is the radio? Oh, we didn't even apply it yet. So under the static mesh, make sure we do the actual walkie so it shows up. And now you'll see that the walkie is here. And notice that it's slightly moving. That's because we made it a child of a socket. And the reason that this is important is it's gonna look like our character is actually holding the walkie. Now, as you can see, it's in a terrible position and it's also very small. While I don't normally recommend scaling things, um, in this case, let's go ahead and scale it to two. Or you know what, no, I'm gonna teach you how to do this correctly, gosh darn it. Go ahead, put this back to one on the scale and let's fix it the appropriate way. Open up the walkie 3D model again. On the right hand side, let's go ahead and scroll down until you see import settings. Then under transform, you'll see import uniform scale one. We need this to be about double the size, so put it at two and hit reimport base mesh and save. Now it's double the size that it was and we don't have to use scaling. Now I'm just gonna simply grab it and move it around until it's about where our right hand would be if we were holding it. Remember, don't go by the hands down here. Go as if this was your face. So, you know, if the player was looking out the camera, we want it to kind of be like on the right side. And we'll see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and hit save and compile and hit play. So that's pretty high in the air. Let's bring that down some. Go in here and we'll bring it down some. Save and compile. Let's check it out. And that's a lot better. We can see that we're holding the radio, but at the same time, it's not in the way. The next thing I'm going to do is click on the first person mesh, the actual arms, and I'm gonna make those so they're not visible anymore. That doesn't propagate to the children, so don't worry, the radio is still there. And if we save, the reason we put it on there but still hit it is now look, one, it moves when we walk, but two, it has the breathing animation. It just brings a little bit more liveliness and polish to your held items. Now let's make it so the ghost can actually make that crying noise. Let's open up our parent ghost and under its components, press add and select audio. We're gonna call this scream because it's pretty much the only audio the ghost will be making. On the right hand side, go ahead and type in scream or I apologize, it's crying. I forgot, we decided to go with crying. Go ahead and select your crying cue and I'm gonna rename this to be crying. Sound automatically wants to start playing. So over here in the details panel, go ahead and type in the word auto and see where it says auto activate. Go ahead and uncheck this, compile and save. In this case, we do kind of want it to auto activate, but we're gonna go ahead and code it as if this ghost does have the crying evidence, so therefore we'll be able to hear it. We're gonna create a custom event, and we're gonna call it start cry. We're going to create another variable, and we're going to call it is crying. Any ghost that has the crying evidence will have to make sure to set this to true. For now, pull it out and hit get. Create a branch and plug it in accordingly. If the ghost is crying, then what we need to do is get a reference to crying, pull out of it, and type in play. And now, anytime a ghost has the evidence, it will start crying. However, right now, this crying will be heard no matter what. We will fix this, but for the time being, the player is hard stuck holding the radio. We will change it when we implement the system to change tools. One last thing, the crying will eventually stop because we didn't change something. Head back to your imported folder, go to free sound, go to the Banshee crying, and open up the queue. Click on the sound and you'll see that there's something called looping. Go ahead and check that and hit save and now it will loop the sound. Because we want to test this, 
Go ahead and click on is crying. Make sure there's nothing in the search and change the default variable. Oh, we have to compile first. Change the default variable to true, save and compile. And when we hit play, the ghost should cry. Ah, I forgot to add start cry to our event begin play. Let's go ahead and compile and save. Try that again. Ooh, that is terrifying. Now, here's the thing. As of right now, it's just kind of a booming, echoing noise. Uh, in the future, if we get to eventually polishing this, we'll make it so it sounds like it's coming specifically from the radio, and we'll add a couple of filters to make it sound like it's actually a radio speaker. But for now, we've added in the crying evidence, and we can create a sub-ghost that has access to the is crying variable. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode.